Made a couple of roster transactions today. Uh, signed Corey Levin, center. Uh, signed Shane Ray, outside linebacker. Uh, two additions for us here in camp. We released um, Dylan, the running back from Washington. So it's a kind of a we had one more spot. We had to make room for the other. So uh, that's today's transactions. Uh, injury wise, uh, Harold Landry is still uh, out. He's been sick, so it's just an illness. We'll have to work him back in um, as he gets healthy. You know, anybody who's been sick for a while knows he can't come out that quickly. So uh, he'll be working back. And then uh, Cheeto, Cheeto's going to be out for, for – he's going to miss some time with a calf injury. So uh, it'll be a couple of weeks probably uh, just so you see what uh, – he's out here, but he's not practicing. Uh, other than that, uh, Brunskill was sick the other day. I know I didn't talk to you guys, but Brunskill was sick. He was back today. So that's the updates for the injuries. As far as practice goes, uh, two really good days to start. Um, get a little bit of humidity. Kind of jumped on guys some today. You can see, a, you know, getting used to playing football again. It always takes some time to get back into it. But I thought the defense had a really good day yesterday. Uh, really made it hard on us. And then today, I think offensively, we bounced back pretty well. I think our quarterback uh, made some nice throws today. I thought that we ran the ball better today. We were better up front. So uh, really two good days of work. Tomorrow, as you guys have seen, just as an explanation, um, you know, we don't we try to stay from a bunch of vertical balls down the field these first couple of days of camp. Um, so you see a little bit more intermediate passing game, shorter passing game. That's by design. That's to make sure that we don't uh, put guys under too much stress too early. Uh, tomorrow will be a jog through day for us. We'll we still practice and move around, but we back our tempo way down uh, after that third day. So uh, and then we'll, we'll ramp it back up for this practice in the stadium, which I can't wait for on Saturday. Should be fun to get some fans out there. Um, that's sort of where we're at this week. I'll let you guys kind of go from there. Do you feel like you'll have the pads on uh, to go? Will that be Saturday? Uh, no, we can't. We are not allowed to. Um, according to the, it's all part of the acclimation period. We don't get to go until after seven days of the acclimation. That's the CBA requirement. Uh, so our first day of pads, I, if, I don't want to misspeak, but I think the first day of pads is next Tuesday. Uh, similar to what we've seen out here the first uh, couple of days. Yeah, similar. They'll have their, uh, they'll have their kind of half the. Uh, there's not, not even shells, but the, those kind of spider pads, whatever they're called. Uh, so they'll have something on, but uh, they won't be in pads yet. But it'll be a similar uh, setup uh, to the last couple of practices, maybe just a touch longer as we start adding minutes to practice and, and getting used to practicing longer. Well, Jerry's schedule is, mm -hmm. you know, he was out there a lot yesterday and not, not yep. today. How, how can he establish himself as, as kind of the leader that he's <coughs> clearly going to be on yeah. Sundays? When he's not present as much in practice. Yeah, he's that the practice part we have to work through, but he's also a part of everything else. You know, he's in the meeting room, he's in the building. You know, he's got a reputation on top of it uh, as well, so that always helps. Um, he's played really good football, so uh, his reputation precedes him in terms of his ability to play the position, and so he, he garners that sort of immediate respect um, and leadership. But as much as he's around the guys, that's the that's the main part. Obviously, you love to practice every day, but um, that's just not where he's at, and we got to manage that part of him. So uh, I don't have any concerns about where he'd be leadership wise and, and uh, communication wise but uh, you get that work and when you're in the meeting rooms both and we also talked to Kansas City you know they we, we had our, our trainers had reached out and uh, talked asked about the program he was on and how they did it and then uh, obviously with the uh, our doctors and our trainers and with some input from him just what the best thing is for him to stay as as healthy and fresh as possible for you know, 17 games plus. Do you believe the guys who are out being on the field while they're out and, I do. and taking mental reps? Yeah, I like them to be around the guys. You know, they, they got to do whatever they do rehab-wise. Um, and then when they're finished with that, I, I like them to be a part of the practice, um, especially when you're talking about guys that are starters and, and veteran players that, uh, you know, you want being around. So I, I like those guys to still be engaged and active in what's happening in practice. The way uh, Tavondre Sweat has been, you know, after two practices, seeing him out there. Uh, he's done good. You know, he's like a lot of guys right now that, that probably aren't in full football shape to go play a full game, and, and that's why we, we do training camp. Um, but everything I've seen from him is, is what I saw on tape. You know, he's big, he's strong, uh, he moves incredibly well for a person of his size, uh, and he's an awesome personality to be around. So uh, really have enjoyed what he's done so far, happy he's ready to roll and healthy and, and practicing. So um, looking forward to seeing what's to come when the pads come on with him. Knowing that first day is always like so tough for everybody, even receivers. You know, how much does that weigh into as you evaluate them over the first? Yeah, day? we 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 understand. You know, it factors in the evaluation. We know that um, some of these guys, you know, that 
there's nothing you can't simulate playing football, you know, especially when you have bodies on you and you're pushing and you're leaning on guys. It's just it's totally different than even if you're running 100 routes a day uh, or doing 100 pass sets. It's just different. So uh, we know that, but uh, you know, time is ticking. So there's you know we got to get going pretty quickly and and guys' legs get under them pretty fast once they play a couple days worth and, and they're kind of back rate or in normal football shape. We've seen the defense rake out three balls, mostly on passes down the field. Obviously, I'm sure that's something you're preaching and Denard's preaching on defense, but how much is that becoming a teaching moment on offense for those guys, too? Oh, yeah, both. I mean, our, they, they got it pretty good yesterday for me. Um, you know, we just we can't turn the ball over on offense. It's just it's unacceptable. Um, but on the flip side, as the head coach, I get to be excited when the defense pulls it out. Um, but it's good. It's it's the way you want your defense to be. You got to get the ball off 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 people in, in in the NFL to win games. Turnover margin is one of the most critical factors. So we can't. We got to be better securing it down the field offensively, and and our defense has got to keep at it. I mean, we we punch balls out like that on a regular basis. Uh, you know, you you go plus two in the turnover margin, you're going to win a lot of football games um, just on that alone. So uh, I love the emphasis. Guys are doing a great job of of taking it and executing it on the field and. I got to do a better job offensively. Early, but Will and the offense through two days. What have you seen? Uh, very pleased. Very pleased. I think Will's doing a great job uh, playing on time. You know, obviously we're again focused on a little bit more of the of the timing elements, the shorter passing game. But man, he's he's been really impressive. I think his hard work uh, this off season and over the summer has really paid off. Um, he's incredibly confident right now. Uh, and he's earned that confidence. And every day that he comes out and plays well, uh, he earns more confidence. And, and I think that that's the fun part about where he's at. Um, he's dialed in. Uh, he has studied. You can just tell he's, he's ready for what's ahead. And, and I think I told him yesterday, if he keeps stacking days like he had yesterday and today, um, you know, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna play pretty good football. And, and it's, it's a day-by-day -day process, and, and we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. But uh, he's been really, I've been really pleased with where he's at. What's so Juku uh, done to? I mean, he's kind of gone under the radar, but, but mm -hmm. seems to be holding up pretty well out there, getting a lot of significant snaps. But what yeah. do you guys like about him? He, um, you know, he's one of the, the first thing is that, you, you know, for a guy like him, I, I think I might have said it before, but uh, you don't notice him. And that's a good thing. You know, he's, he's not making errors. Uh, he's doing what he's supposed to do, what he's coached to do, um, and and doing it well. Again, this is all going to change next week. Um, we'll really see what it's all about. But as far as the work that he's done and his attention to detail and the techniques um, and knowing what to do uh, has been really good. He's done a nice job. And he's been he's been physical. He's been locked in in the meeting room. So um, he's made the most of an opportunity, and I'm happy to see it. He looked like he was limping around. He looked like he was limping around a little bit today. Does he have anything going on? Not that I'm aware of, no. Will playing on time, how much of that is also the chemistry with the receivers? How have you, what have you taken away from that position group first? It, it all goes together, certainly. Um, and that's a, you know, that position group is really fun for me. Those guys between Hop and, and Tyler and Calvin, I mean, those are guys that played a lot of football and uh, they understand what we're trying to do. They understand how to run routes. Um, it's helpful. That they're where they're supposed to be. And sometimes it's that simple as just be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. And that's how timing happens. And it's on Will to do his part. But they're in the spaces where they're supposed to be and the windows are supposed to be. And um, they just got a great understanding and a great feel for how to play the position. And it's, you know, I am excited about the young guys that are playing well, too. I mean, I think I think Trey's done a nice job. I think some of the young players, uh, Sam Snee and uh, uh, those guys have, have really taken a lot of coaching and, and done some good things. So it's going to be a fun group to watch, I think, over the course of the preseason from top to bottom. What have you seen from Josh Wiley just early on, growth period from OTAs to now? It seems like the confidence is there. Mm -hmm. Talks a little bit about out there. Yeah, tight end is a position that is all, that always takes a little bit of time. Um, there's just a lot to learn and a, and a lot to adjust to in the NFL. And um, Josh has done a great job of, of taking care of his body, first and foremost. You know, being available helps. And I know he's battled some injuries. Um, He's just become more of a pro. His approach is fantastic. And then he's got all the tools to be a, a very, very good tight end. And um, he's got range and length, and, and he's physical. So uh, again, pads will come on, and we'll, we can have further conversations. But everything he's done so far, he's put himself in great position. And, and I really, I think that tight end group is, is going to be a good group to have for us between, between Nick, um, Nick, Chig, and Josh. And then uh, the young guys we have, too, is with, with DMR and Stellanos and those guys. It's, it's going to be a good group. On these fences, used to say full tilt and energy and effort mm -hmm. and, and stuff. 
Uh, I'm curious what, if you have a, a slogan or a catchphrase that you're asking guys to keep front of mind during mm-hmm. this camp, and what your philosophy is about that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's. I, I'm. I, I like. I like simple and repeatable um, phrases, and I think sometimes less is more. And so the I have two words in our team room that I mentioned in my opening press conference with resilient and relentless. Um, and then we really have the, the next part of that is we have three C's. It's character communication and it can be in a connected team. And um, those things to me are, are sort of the core of what uh, I want our team to look like. And uh, we talk about them in our team meetings, you know, ad nauseum sometimes. I'm sure they get tired of it. But, um, you know, they're up in the team. The words are up in the team room. I just think there's uh, an emphasis placed on, on a few things and it, it tends to go a long way. So um, that's sort of what I think about it. What did you say? What did you see in Shane Ray that you liked when he was here on his uh, minicamp tryout? Yeah, he did a nice job. He was in shape. Um, I know Shane's played played quite a bit of football. Um, I actually was was in Denver when Shane was drafted. Just turns out that way. Um, so I've, I've I've known Shane for a long time, and you know he came in, he he performed well, and I think it's always impressive when veterans um, like him that have played enough football come into a, 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 a minicamp tryout, um, and practice the ass off, you know, and and play hard and do all those things because they love playing football. And so uh, excited to get Shane here. You know, we needed some guys to, to rotate in there and uh, at the outside linebacker spot and, and compete. So, um, you know, guy played a little bit of football f- in the league, and I think he can help us. How do you want to see Roger McCrary kind of take to the new system? Roger's been, been really good so far, you know. Uh, I think Roger, for, for a, a man of, of a little bit smaller stature, plays a whole lot bigger. Uh, because of in- intensity that he plays with and the physicality he plays with. And uh, it's going to be fun to watch him fit the – he fits the nature of what uh, Denard's looking for at the nickel spot because those guys got to fit in the run game. You know, they're, they're, they're an integral part of all the 11 personnel run game. They got to be able to cover. They got to be able to tackle. So uh, everything about Roger has been, has been exactly what I would expect from him so far. Uh, and he's really a perfect match for what Denard's looking for. Kelly, quick uh, non-Titans question. Uh, you, you've worked with a lot of uh, quarterbacks just in, in your coaching career. I'm wondering when you know a young quarterback, particularly like a, a rookie, is is ready. To, when you know they're ready to start. Like Joe, for instance, uh, he was the number one yeah. pick, so he was going to start, right? But how do you know a guy is actually ready to play? That is a good question. Um, I would say, first and foremost, like can they get just get the play out of their mouth and break the huddle? Uh, can they get everybody lined up? And then can they get the ball snapped and just operate the offense? They don't even have to make any special plays, but just the organization and, and operation of, of the offense uh, is a lot. It's a lot on the quarterback in, a, in most systems, and uh, that's sort of the starting point. Now, how do you know they're going to be up to the task? You don't until they play. You know, it's a whole different world when you get out there and, um, you know, the coaches aren't standing right behind you and no one's telling you what to do. And so, to, the long and the short of it is they got to play and you got to find out when they play uh, what it looks like. But the operation is the biggest part is just being able to, to lead and manage the offense and then, you know, take completions when they get them and be able to manage the run game uh, when they have to manage the run game. So like one of the, uh, the few negative numbers, I guess, about Jerry Snead last year was the penalty totals. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you take that in stride with, with the style he plays and with the bottom line that he's not surrendering a lot of passes, or, or is that something you want to, to win? No, uh, you definitely don't want penalties. You don't want to, You never want to be the highest penalized in anything. Um, but it is part of his play style. I think you can. there's some technique things you can clean up uh, when you guys get a little grabby and handsy at the top of routes. But um, he's just an incredibly aggressive corner, and uh, you got to live with that. That's the cost of doing business sometimes when guys play that way, and, and he's going to make a whole lot more plays than he's going to give up. But, yeah, there, you try to correct it. You point out where he could be better where his technique could be better, uh, but but sometimes just with the style of play, you're, you're going to get that naturally because he's so aggressive. Will said the, f- the fifth time something's installed, he's very conscious of, of taking a different note on it. How important is that for young players? What do you want a guy like DeAndre, who's seeing something installed for the 500th time, to, to take from it? And how is a guy not to be bored by it? Yeah, you, you have to... Truthfully, you have to fight boredom as a veteran player because you know there's only there's so much offensive football now. You know, it's for Hop now, there's a lot to go new for him. Verbiage and maybe the routes are the same, and the concepts he's got to translate. But um, it's still new, so he's still got he still studies. I mean, he was in here this morning uh, studying with Tyke as a as as a veteran player that's played a ton of football. So uh, the best player, the, the the really good players, the great players in the league, uh, never take it for granted, and and they study just like it's the first time they've heard it. Uh, you know, watching Peyton Manning take notes on on a play that's the simplest play in football. Um, and he's probably heard it 
installed a million times and he's still taking notes on the same play uh, because I think there's always something to learn. There's always a nuance. There's always a maybe a different coverage. Um, and Will certainly, you know, he's, he's hearing it for the fifth time, not for the 600th time. And so uh, every note you can take and every way you can look at the play is always going to help. It's going to make you better every time you do it. You can see a lot of Kenneth, Kenneth Murray, I guess, during the offseason, but he's been pretty active. It seems like the first couple of days, have you noticed that yeah, yourself? Yeah, very active. You know, he's hard to block. Uh, he triggers fast. Uh, downhill, that's, which has always been his MO. He's really physical and he's a downhill player. Um, and so we've had some trouble, especially early on, just coming off on combinations and getting to him fast enough because uh, he diagnoses really quick and he hits it. And there's, uh, that's what you want to see from, from a guy like that. And um, he's flashed early for sure. His, his ability to, to, to diagnose quickly and react has been, been impressive. And um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what pads look like when he can, when he can go thud up on some guys and uh, see what that looks like. Uh, with Jamal, is there an easy end process with the install, or is he pretty much where he needs to be with everything? He can do? Uh, I mean, we're you know we sort of start over every every time we start again. So OTAs, um, the, the the OSP, the OTAs, the mini camp, and then training camp. So you sort of get a couple of times through it. So he 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 jumped in at the early stages again. This is a little bit different than what they did with Denard in New York, and so it's 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 new, um, and he'll be able to catch up. Pretty quickly, I think, but uh, so far so good. Um, but we've only, you know, we're only a couple installs in again, so uh, at least he gets to start over again. We're not just jumping in 12 installs down, and, and he's got to pick it up. So he's in a good place. How do you feel coming into camp this year? Uh, a little bit different, and what's your outlook on everything? Feel good, excited, new pieces, new team, new year. So just looking forward to it. What did you kind of take away the last two days getting together with everyone? Going to have a competitive team. Guys talking. Guys came ready to, to play uh, in shape. So, you know, I think um, you know just looking forward to to how camp ends. Uh, we're taking it day by day. What did you do to kind of get ready for camp? And did, have you changed things over the course of your career to know when to peak at the right time? Uh, no, I've been doing this for 12 years. Pretty consistent. So, um, you know, can't change what's not broke. But uh, of course, you know, always trying to get better uh, and just working on myself. On, on Will, maybe just from one year to the next, what, what changes you might have seen in uh, all coming into the camp? Just, uh, just knowing that he's com coming into camp as QB1, I think uh, obviously his mindset is, uh, is a little different than it was last year going into camp. And you can tell uh, how he's approaching every day. Do you sense like a higher level of confidence from him and just like a different swagger, you know, knowing that he has the keys to everything? He's always had swagger. He's always been the same. So uh, I wouldn't say it's anything different from when he came last year. Uh, and, you know, he didn't win the job. He was talking about the fifth time something's installed. He's very conscious of taking a, a different note each each time. You're seeing stuff installed for the 500th time or however many. How do you keep things kind of new and, and look at something without being – Callahan used the word bored for, for, for a veteran. Uh, it's a new offense. I haven't played an offense like this, so you know, it's, I don't think uh, I can be bored, uh, you know, trying to learn this offense. So uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, pass friendly. So, uh, you know, I just wake up every day trying to come out, execute, uh, be there for my quarterback. And, uh, you know, it's, it's different. I played in a lot of different offenses. This is, uh, this is, this is a different one, so, you know, a lot, of, a lot of studying when I get home. When you're looking at this, really I mean, just I, a little I, bit when, more. Johnny, let me follow up. Uh, did this pass friendly mean just more passing, or do you like some of the, the different schemes? That you uh, have? I like some of the different schemes. Uh, you know, I haven't seen schemes like this. So, you know, I guess when I say pass friendly, it's just, you know, um, you know, for, for us receivers, you know, it's just, you know, you know sometimes that, you know, you might get the ball. Uh, you know, more more times than not at receiver. So, uh, just you know, for us, you know, just a little bit more excitement out wide. New offense includes a lot of the same routes that that you've run. So when you're looking at that, a particular route being mm -hmm. reinstalled that you're very familiar with, right. how do you find new new stuff about a route that you've caught hundreds of balls on? Uh, for me, it's just going out and, and trying to stay sharp. You know, uh, sticking to the basics. I know I've been doing this for a long time, so you know, not really, you know, expecting the same results because guys have been playing me. They've, they've been watching me for a while. 
they know some of the things that uh, you know I, I kind of excel at. So just going out and, and kind of just trying to win against people who know that you know I might you know run this route this kind of way. So for me, it's uh, it's always a challenge. When asked about possible extension, you know, Rand said that you know where you stand with this organization, with this franchise. Can you like dictate, verbalize to us like where you feel you stand with? So I take it day by day. I love, I love Tennessee. Uh, I love, you know, what Miss Amy's doing. Uh, so, you know, I think this is, uh, you know, the happiest I've been in any organization. So, just, you know, just let that speak for itself. What is it about this organization that makes you so happy? Uh, you know, how, how Miss Amy run things. You know, it's it's a great place to be. Uh, you know, she's putting pieces together. You know, to try to win, and you know, it's it's, it's exciting. And that we see you out and about in, in the city itself. You, you know. You do a lot of things. Like, what is it about Nashville that you know has really captured your heart? Uh, you know, I'm a country boy, so you know, I grew up on country. I grew up around, uh, you know, places like this. You know, a little smaller, but uh, you know, it's just it's familiar. Being from South Carolina. Do you buy into the contract year boost performance thing that a lot of people talk about? Players playing better when they have one year left. Uh, Man, I, I really don't, man. I guess you kind of go back and and answer that for yourself by looking at my stats going in the contract or out of contract or just getting a contract. Yesterday there was a lot of smack talk from the defense early in, in the team drills, and you kind of gave it back to them. That's kind of a side that we haven't seen a whole lot of, you, you know, since you've been here. Is that just another aspect of it, or is that something you enjoy? Or? Uh, I don't know. I guess y'all miss some of those practices, but yeah, I definitely always talk smack. That's that's who I am. You know, I just like I like to compete. I've done that since I've been a rookie in the NFL to now. Uh, you know, but obviously during the game, it's it's business. You know, I'm not out there talking smack every play, but of course it's it's friendly competition. But you know, just just trying to match their energy. We got a good defense. Have you seen enough of, of Legarius, you know, through the offseason or even just yesterday to get an idea of his style and sort of what makes him oh, yeah. successful? Uh, he, he, he takes everything serious uh, and he's all about his, you know, technique and, you know, details. Even in walkthroughs, you know, he's uh, he's very detail oriented and uh, you can tell that, you know, he's he's been coached well and he's played a lot of good ball. Uh, but yeah, you know, we haven't obviously had a lot of reps against each other, but you can tell that, you know, he's he's one of the best doing it. What are your passing kind of been with Jamal and what is, what's a guy like that bring to a team? Pardon, okay. Jamal, Jamal Adams, what, okay. what are your pass encounters been like with him and what's he bring to the team? Uh, Jamal bring excitement, energy. Uh, you know, Jamal is, you know, he came out here from the first day excited, uh, you know, doing, doing what he do. Uh, you know, Jamal is an experienced player. Uh, I've played against him. I've hung out with him, you know, before. So Jamal is it's definitely going to bring a different component to the defense, uh, you know, especially in the secondary. But, you know, I, I think the guy, you know, he's he, he's a veteran. He's played a lot of ball. So I was just excited to see him play. Last year it was full tilt. This year coach said resilient and relentless are, are kind of the key words that he's pushing. How much meaning is there in a coach's, like, main message? I, I, part, what's the question? I'm curious about like Brian's main message is is, is uh, resilience and relentless. Last year, Mike was big on full tilt. How much does a coach's main message like that, that's up on the wall that you see every day, mean? Uh, it means a lot, especially you know when your head coach is you know just just like you know the quarterback. He's the leader of the team, leader of the organization. You know, so you know seeing that, seeing what he want, obviously you know we're going to try to go out and um, perform to our best. You know, we've, we're, we're in the NFL, so obviously, you know, we got here for a reason. And, and seeing that, you know, those messages like that, it's just a reminder. Uh, and I think it's good that, you know, we have those up. You talked about tendencies, d and how some guys, you know, kind of know what you're good at and what you can do. Even at this stage in the game as a veteran, do you find new ways to have, I don't know, nuances to show them something they may not have seen from you? Of course. Uh, you know, my receiver coach, he's always critiquing my game, telling me certain things that I can do to be better. And, you know, I love that. I want that. You know, I never want to, you know, feel like I know it all or, you know, I've, I've arrived. You know, it's always new talent, uh, you know. So for me, I love being critiqued and, you know, just working on little things that I can do better, uh, you know. So for me, I love it.
little bit about uh, sort of the management plan that, that you'll be using with the Titans, and, and I guess was that a little bit of a carryover from the way you did things in Kansas City? Uh, yes, you know, I did Kansas City. You know, they treat me better, you know, and uh, the trainer, he's getting me right, and the plan and everything. And in Kansas City, I didn't do no camp at all, you know, but here, you know, I'm trying to work and do camp and get mental reps. Are you guys going to do it just kind of like a day-by-day, day, like how you feel thing, or, or is it? Uh, no, it's, they have a plan for me, you know. They have days where I just, you know, did what I did today and days that I just practiced. It's a pretty good schedule that they got me on. What have you got to accomplish, I guess, over the next six weeks to be peaking for uh, for week one? I mean, you know, I'm healthy. You know, I just got to maintain it and, you know, just get that to week one. That's all I'm trying to get to. So how does the knee feel if you're healthy? My knee feel great. Okay. Yes, feel great. <laughs> Why do you feel the need to keep the limitations if you're healthy? Because the procedures that I'm having, you know, the things that I got going on with me, and you know. What's uh, I guess been the challenge? You figured it out clearly, but been the challenge of going off and then coming back on and going off when you're trying to. Uh, it's, yes, it's very frustrating. I can say that uh, it gets to me sometimes, but you know. Last year, it helped me out on what I need to do. And last year, look at what I, where I'm at and where it got me. And, you know, I'm going to stick to that plan. And I think it works, and it does. How do you like the defense and maybe the guys around you? Well, I love the defense. You know, I love the coach. I love the mentality he has, aggressive. You know, once I get this down, man, once the whole entire defense get it down, we're going to be one of the best. But, Jarius, while you haven't maybe been able to be on the field as much right now, I guess, how are you? still able to show like a, a leadership presence right because you're going to be a leader in yes sir yes sir you know i was i was out there today you know i posted came back in and finished my rehabbing and whatever you know i stayed out there and watched those guys and you know coached them up on the plays they asked me questions i try to give them the best answer i can is there a degree that that's missing though when you when you aren't out there or can you make up for that with with the others oh well, yes man i make up for it and you know it's all a mind thing you know you know i stay grounded and keep going and stay in my playbook. You came from the Chiefs, and obviously they, they're a high-profile team. They've won Super Bowls in you know, last year and in recent years. You come here to a team that's kind of transitioning and still building. What's been what's that change been like for you? Oh, man, you know, coming from the culture where I came from, you know, I'm trying to bring it here. You know, I know what winning look like. And, you know, we're going to get together, and we're going to be all right over here. The things maybe that you see in this organization, I know early on with a lot of newness, but that could eventually get to that. Oh, everybody's hungry. From the coaches, from the janitors, from everybody in this building, everybody's hungry. As a guy who reached the level that you've reached, you know, as far as one of the top corners, what did you do this past offseason? Like, what were some of the areas of focus where you felt that you could improve? Oh, man, things, you know, just try to get this playbook down, you know, be aggressive and you know, work on my press technique. It's just certain things that I went back and watched film on. Oh, how can I be better here? How can I be better there? With that aggressiveness and press technique, you know, obviously down the field, you want to have that hands on, but how do you balance that to, you know, not get as many penalties this year? Oh, man, get your head back. You know, that's in the past. I'm not worried about penalties no more. I'm going to be way better this year. But it's something that's, I mean, it's documented. Understood. You know, that has happened. So how do you get better in that, that perspective? Oh, uh, you know, work on it all season. Get my head back. I know what I did last year on too much grabbing. You know, I'm an aggressive corner. You know, it's going to come. And, you know, I just react. Are there times where it's worth it to set a tone, to get one? Oh, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't mind getting one, you know. Uh, if you if you ain't holding, you ain't doing nothing right, you know. And most of the DBs we hold. <laughs> How challenging is the playbook? You mentioned it a couple of times. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's challenging. You know, it's I, I know the defense. It's just technique, what I have to learn from the old team to this team. My technique, as in, like, attaching to people more quicker and not in, like, a zone type thing. Is the system kind of a natural fit for your, your skills? You definitely is. Pressing and physicality? It definitely is. On that. It's definitely as aggressive, and that's what type of cornerback I am. I'm an aggressive cornerback. What, um, what, what do you count on from Cheeto? I know he's out for a little while now, but what do you expect out of out of your pairing with him in terms of combo? Uh, Cheeto, he's a he's a great you know, teammate. He's a leader. He get everybody he know his playbook. He get everybody you know lined up. Everybody ask some questions. And you see his notes, he's very detailed. What, what about 
about Jamal? You, you spent much time around him, and what, what's what's it like having him down the road? Oh, uh, you know, from my time being with him, from the time he's been here, you know, I could tell he's passionate about his game. He loved the game, and I can't wait to get out of the field on him. But, uh, D Hop, 32 years old, still racking up big numbers. I know you haven't seen maybe a ton of him, but, but what's what's he do so well to just still be putting up these kind of numbers at an age where a lot of wide receivers have? Oh, man, the game, man, you know, it's a finesse game. I think he's mastered the finesse and know how to know the tricks and all. Yeah, he know them. Thanks, Max.